In this video, I'll be comparing a range of different powered laser pointers by looking at these lasers side by side. They are arranged in the order that they will appear in the beam shots. On the right, I've added a generic 1000 milliwatt or 1 watt blue laser into the mix for the sake of comparison in the outdoor beam shots. First, we've got to get the proper safety glasses for the type of laser that we're using. And this camera doesn't do a very good job of capturing through the lens, but you can tell these glasses here are calibrated to the 520 nanometer laser that I'm using here. It is a one watt laser and you can see that it easily burns into the top of my workbench. And here we have a pair of glasses that look very similar, but these glasses do not block out the 520 nanometer green color. Uh, you can tell you can still see the dot and you can see the green smoke and that is because these glasses are actually calibrated towards the 450 nanometer blue laser like this one watt blue laser that i'm using here and you can see it does a pretty good job at blocking out the blue light so you can imagine the kind of damage these lasers can do to your eyes if it's able to burn so easily into my workbench like this here I'm trying to show the dot sizes by aiming the lasers at a piece of matte black foam core at a distance of about 6 meters or 20 feet away. The reflected light makes it a little bit difficult to show, but here's a close-up of the spots. These lasers are a fire hazard, so be careful if attempting something like this indoors at home. I did not use any fog or smoke when filming these, although it kind of looks like it because of the lens flare. Next we'll take a look at some outdoor beam shots and we'll see how well these lasers do at igniting some matches and burning through some pieces of cardboard. And this is the setup for the outdoor beam shots. That stand of trees is about 200 meters away. And it's worth noting that the camera really doesn't pick up the nuances between the 532 nanometer and the 520 nanometer color shift. The uh, two lasers on the left are both the 532 nanometer wavelength DPSS lasers and the rest of these are 520 nanometer direct diode lasers. And you can really see some of the differences between the thicknesses of the beams and perhaps you can see some differences in divergence too. The higher you go up in power, the more divergence you get, meaning that the beam expands and the spot becomes larger with distance. The direct diode lasers use a diode made of two semiconductors that converts electricity directly into light, and the materials that the semiconductors are made from determine the color of the light. DPSS, on the other hand, stands for Diode Pumped Solid State Laser, whereby a diode pumps infrared light through a couple of crystals to get the 532 nanometer green color, and then that light is culminated through a lens into a beam. Here I've added that 1000 milliwatt blue laser, which is 450 nanometers uh, wavelength or color. And it's worth noting also that the camera sensors are very sensitive to the blue lasers, so they will often render a little bit brighter on camera. And this seems like a fairly accurate rendition, although I feel like the beam of the blue laser probably isn't quite this saturated to the naked eye. But in the future, I hope to do a similar video featuring just blue lasers as well. I should probably mention safety before we get into the burning portion. As you can see here, even if I dramatically underexpose these shots, the lasers are still way too bright and powerful to be used as pet toys or even as classroom presentation pointers. They should almost be handled as though they are firearms, keeping an awareness of where they are pointed even before turning them on. Watch out for reflections and never point them at airplanes or living creatures. Safety glasses should always be used even when looking at the dot and especially when trying to burn things. For the burn test, I tried to focus all the laser beams down to about 20 centimeters. I could not get this 45 milliwatt version of the laser 303 to light a wooden match. The 100 milliwatt 532 nanometer laser was able to light matches at the point in which the laser was focused. This is a model 890 series from the laserpointerstore.com. Thank you. 
The 100 milliwatt 520 nanometer laser was a little more powerful and you can see it looks like I focused it a little further away. This is also a version of the Model 890 from laserpointerstore.com. You can see here the difference between trying to light the match when the laser is unfocused versus when it is focused. The 230 milliwatt laser focuses down into a really nice beam and you can see it has no problem igniting these matches where it is focused at about 20 centimeters away. This laser is from Bartlett Unlimited and it is one of their stainless steel series models which was actually advertised as 300 milliwatts but I was actually quite happy to get one that was closer to 200. This laser is powerful enough that it might have ignited the matches in some of these unfocused areas had I given it a little more time. And here's the 500 milliwatt laser and here again instant combustion where focused. And I also think this laser would have lit in the match in these unfocused areas had I given it a little more time. This model 890 from the laser pointer store actually came in over spec at 500 milliwatts. It was advertised as being a 300 milliwatt laser. Now the 1000 milliwatt was pretty much instant combustion whether focused or unfocused. This is the PLE Mini from Jet Lasers. And you can see that part of the challenge is to get the match head to line up perfectly with the laser beam. And there was instant combustion with the 1230 milliwatt laser. This is the PLE Pro model from Jet Lasers which also came in over spec as it was advertised at 1000 milliwatts. The matches are igniting along all parts of the beam here. And the same goes for the 1000 milliwatt blue laser. Uh, the match could be lit all along the beam. This beam wasn't even focused at a short distance. It was focused on infinity. This is a generic blue laser like the ones you find on Amazon, eBay, and AliExpress. Next, I tried to burn through these two cardboard boxes with each laser. The first box that I used was this lightweight Amazon shipping box, but since most of the lasers blasted through this box with relative ease, I decided to try the same experiment with this other box made of more standard weight heavy duty cardboard, which seems to be about twice the weight and thickness of the first box. I could not get the 45 and 100 milliwatt lasers to penetrate either box. But I did get some smoke and surface burn marks from the 100 milliwatt lasers. As you can see, the 100 milliwatt 520 nanometer laser came very close. Perhaps with some tweaking of the focus and distance, the 100 milliwatt lasers would make it through both boxes. The 230 milliwatt didn't have much problem making it through the thin cardboard. And it took about 30 seconds for the 230 milliwatt to make it through the heavy duty cardboard. I did edit this shot so that we wouldn't have to sit through 30 seconds of watching this thing burn. The 500 milliwatt had no problem getting through the thin box. In fact, I thought I was going to be able to get through both sides and it possibly could have had I moved the focus a little bit further out. But as you can see here, as soon as I move the laser it just burns through that first piece of cardboard. and. With the heavy duty box, it basically did the same thing, it just took a little bit longer. I'm posting all of these burn shots in real time, by the way, meaning that I'm not speeding up or slowing down the video. It's pretty impressive to me to think that each of these pieces of cardboard is comprised of three different layers of material to burn through. The 1000 milliwatt had no problems getting through the thin box. And in fact, it took about 15 seconds for it to burn through both sides. And there it is. With the heavy duty box, the 1000 milliwatt laser took about 10 extra seconds to get through both sides. So it took about 25 seconds to pass all the way through, but I'm going to edit this to save time. And there it is after 25 seconds. It took the 1230 milliwatt laser all of about 10 seconds to make it through both sides of the thin box. And the 1230 milliwatt laser also took about 25 seconds to make it through both sides of the heavy duty box.
Of course, the burn times are relative to exactly where the laser is focused, the distance of the boxes, and even the materials of the boxes probably differ in thickness and density at different places along the sides. And there we go. The blue laser, which is a 450 nanometer laser at about 1,000 milliwatts, took about 10 seconds to get through both sides of the thin box. And this laser took about 21 seconds to get through both sides of the heavy duty box. This is one of those generic blue lasers that you see for sale for about $40 to $70 on sites like eBay, Amazon, AliExpress. So this 1000 milliwatt blue laser is the one that is second from left in this group of blue lasers, which I'm hoping to use in another power comparison video. But I thought I would share this to maybe put things into perspective regarding the powers of these lasers. The smoke that you see here in the beams is not from a smoke machine, but in fact from the lasers burning through the sheet of foam core on the wall at a distance of about 6 meters or 20 feet. And here you can see the smoke coming off the wall as the lasers burn into the foam core. This is also a testament to just how dangerous these lasers are and how much care should be used while handling them. Please don't try this at home unless you have safety precautions in place and you're familiar with the power of these lasers. I also had to dramatically underexpose the videos of these blue lasers to keep them from appearing unrealistically bright in the video. This group of blue lasers contains a 488 nanometer cyan laser, a 465 nanometer laser, and four other 450 nanometer blue lasers, all of which I hope to compare in a separate video following this one.